Welcome to World Geography Chattahoochee Edition. I'm standing here along the Chattahoochee River here in, in North Florida uh, near the Georgia border. We're going to talk about the Chattahoochee River and the tri-state water war that's occurring between the states of Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. We're going to talk about that in more detailed in our uh, video lecture with the PowerPoint presentation uh, prepared, but for now I think it's going to be a pretty cool experience uh, to dive deeper into this issue of the tri-state water war. Now back in the early 1800s, there was a survey conducted, and in recent years, the Georgia legislature decided to, uh, they think they found an error, and they're trying to rectify that situation by claiming more of Tennessee uh, to get more access uh, to water. But what's happening is Atlanta's urban population is growing so rapidly uh, that they're tapping out their water resources that are available to them. And there's river systems involved that are have, uh, negative downfield effects, if you will, uh, such as states in Alabama, uh, Alabama and Florida. And there's two main river basins. Uh, there's the ACT and the ACF. Uh, I'm here, we're here locally, Tallahassee is closer to the ACF. Uh, here in North Florida, the ACF River Basin is the Apalachicola, flowing into the Apalachicola Bay, the Apalachicola River, flowing out of that. And the Apalachicola to the Chattahoochee, where I am at this moment, and from the Chattahoochee and Flint uh, River, Bay, the river system in the basin as well. Now the other one, you have the Alabama, the Coosa and Tallapoosa River systems and in, in the, in the river basin that's just west of this one. So this water war is uh, controlled by the Army Corps of Engineers where the city of Atlanta is picking up some activity here all of a sudden. Uh, but the uh, Army Corps of Engineers is controlling the amount of water that Atlanta can harness up north in, in uh, central Georgia. And from there, they've used water from Lake Lanier in this river system, like I said, and, and now it has negative uh, ecological effects uh, downstream because the river systems are drying up. There's not the amount of flow that there used to be. And down here for the folks in Florida, for Alabama. And the folks in Alabama want to use this for municipal purposes, power generation, and all the like. Uh, it's their water, they believe, as well, so they would like to do what they want with it. Um, and, and Floridians. Floridians uh, want to see this uh, river accessible because there's a multi-million dollar shellfish industry here in North Florida, the Apalachicola Bay. And we're seeing with uh, less uh, fresh water output here in the Apalachicola Bay uh, nearby uh, from the Chattahoochee, Chattahoochee River system that comes to the Apalachicola. Uh, we see less fresh water output. And when there's fresh water, less fresh water output into the system, there's negative ecological effects. And they believe um, uh, that this will become an increasing burden as the river systems continue to be, uh, become more strained from the use uh, in the Atlanta area. Now, Atlanta is growing at a, at, a, at a major rate, and we're seeing that the population becomes sprawled. It is just uh, moving further and further into suburbs and further and further away from the city center, which makes uh, it more resource dependent and the population continues to boom there to more and more um, stress on water resources that they just simply don't have at this point. For now, that's all we're gonna talk about, the Chattahoochee uh, River system, uh, here where I am right now, and talk about that tri-state water war. Uh, but this is also gonna serve as an overview of the North America chapter for Pulse for Pulse for Johansson. And now this is the smallest region in terms of its two countries. Uh, only North America is only, in, according to this book, uh, the United States and Canada, but it's also uh, home to the two of the three largest countries in the world. Canada, the second largest country in the world, and the United States, the third largest country in the world. So the United States, 50 states and territories, as we know, and in, in Canada, uh, 10 provinces and, thir and three territories for 13 administrative districts total. We'll talk about the physical geography of the United States which is characterized by two large mountain chains, the Appalachian Mountains, which are far more older than their counterpart, the Rocky Mountains, uh, out in the, in, in the American West and the uh, uh, western portion of Canada. And in between that, there's a low-lying area known as the breadbasket of this country, where a lot of agriculture is produced, and uh, the agriculture being uh, wheat production and, and cattle production, and hog farms, and all kinds of other uh, agricultural production that comes from this breadbasket region, which feeds the United States and southeastern Canada and even is exported to other parts of the world. We'll talk about low-lying areas around the Gulf of Mexico and the eastern seaboard and uh, far more of that. We'll talk about the climate, where it's humid subtropical here in the southeastern United States and we'll have humid, um, humid continental 
in the Northeast, Southeastern Canada. We'll talk about dry, hot deserts in the American Southwest and a uh, lucrative climate, the Mediterranean type climate in and along the Pacific, uh, parts of the Pacific coast where it's uh, awesome production for fruits and vegetables and nuts and other types of, uh, of agricultural endeavors like that. Where California is producing two-thirds of the world's almond population and agriculture is a very important part of the California economy and the American economy out for that, uh, for that purpose. We'll talk about milder climates along the coast and the more you move into the interior the larger variability that you'll see within the climate in the United States. Uh, we'll talk about the um, human impacts on the biosphere in the United States, what we've done uh, in terms of our reliance on fossil fuels and our uh, vulnerability that we put ourselves into to climate change. We'll talk about our vulnerability to climate change using specific case studies such as the community of Isla de Jean Charles in southern Louisiana. And we'll talk a lot more about climate change like sea level rise and like we're experiencing in Florida, uh, coastal erosion and, and all types of other um, uh, negative impacts due to, due to climate change. We'll talk about water use and water depletion like we've just done in, in Chattahoochee River, the Apalachicola Chattahoochee, a Flint Basin coming down from Atlanta and uh, uh, needing more water resources uh, is a big issue in metro areas in the, uh, the western part of the United States as well as here in the uh, southern United States. We know that 70% of the world's freshwater use um, goes to uh, ir irrigation and agriculture. So we'll talk about water depletion in the Ogallala Aquifer, which is part of eight states. We'll talk about how depleted uh, that underwater water reserve is in the American uh, Midwest. Uh, we'll talk about uh, human patterns over time in this country. We'll talk about how this region of North America was first settled, how Europeans settled it thereafter, and how new wave immigrants continue to shape this country. From there, we'll talk about the United States' role in global development, in American politics, foreign, uh, foreign affairs, foreign politics, uh, our United States foreign policy, the foreign policy that of Canada. We'll talk about the economics of the United States, the Great Recession, and America's influence on world trade around the world. From there, we'll talk about gender socio-cultural issues in the United States. We'll talk about issues that pertain specifically to the United States, like the baby boom generation retiring, people born from 1946 to 1964, about 76 million Americans starting to retire. That effect on the job market, that effect on the American economy, and social security, Medicare, and social programs that well, the American uh, economy and American uh, government is facing right now. We'll talk about the opioid epidemic in the United States and the uh, newly founded war, if you will, um, the decision from the Trump administration and Attorney General Jeff Sessions to take on Obama-era policies, uh, federal policies like the Cole Memo uh, for marijuana in this country. And we'll talk about all kinds of other issues that are facing uh, North Americans, specifically Americans and Canadians uh, here in our countries and around the world. So for now, that wraps up this introduction and this overview to uh, the Chattahoochee Water War and the Tri-State Water War uh, here in, in North Florida. But more specifically, uh, dive into the, the next forthcoming lectures uh, where we're going to talk deeply about the United States and Canada and the world region of North America. So stay tuned and check out the next video.